Hey guys, I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plants and today I'm gonna teach you how to kill a zebra plant. Okay, just kidding, I'm not gonna teach you how to kill it. I'm gonna do my very best to uh, tell you how I haven't absolutely killed this plant yet. Uh, as you can see, this plant is in a little bit of a rough shape for me and chances are if you are clicking on this video, then potentially you also are having a hard time with this plant. If that is the case, please rest assured these are not easy plants to take care of. Uh, as you can see from this sad example of my plant. However, I have been caring for this plant for about a year and a half now, and what I have learned over time hopefully will be able to be enough for you to learn from my mistakes and have your plants thrive better than this, let's just say that. So if you're interested in learning how to kill slash unkill your plant, keep on watching. So the zebra plants. I refer to this plant as the devil's word because uh, quite honestly that's what it is. Now there are many reasons why this plant is considered a little more difficult to take care of than other plants, but in my opinion there is one thing that overwhelmingly makes this plant incredibly difficult to care for, particularly in my environment here in Arizona, and that is the fact that this guy needs constant water. When I say constant water, when I say it needs a moist soil, when I say it likes to drink a lot, I'm not joking around with you. This plant can't just be a plant that you water once a week when the soil starts to get a little dry. Um, and funny enough, if you read articles online, a lot of those articles will tell you, um, you know, wait for the soil to dry out in between waterings, things like that. Uh-uh, don't do it. The second that you notice water absorbing into uh, the soil of this plant, you need to go back in with water and preferably have a method of watering that is going to be incredibly consistent so that this guy, of course, isn't sitting in a pure swap of water and getting root rot, but really, in terms of watering, I have never come to a point where I have thought that I've over overwatered this plant. Based on the location that I have it in, it really isn't practical for me to do this, but if you are looking for um, a way to keep the soil really, really evenly, uh, hydrated, then hydro spikes might be a great idea. If you're not familiar with those, uh, maybe I will do a video on them in the future, but basically it is a little spike, you put it in the soil, you attach it to either a cup or a bucket or whatever you have with water, and by, um, I'm not sure if it's, uh, there's, uh, it's not osmosis and not uh, gravity, it's, um, why are there so many science terms in these videos? Well, since I can't think of the word, we'll call it hydrodynamics for now, um, but basically the water will travel from that glass automatically into your plant pot through that spike, and it's just, in my opinion, one of the only ways that you will likely keep up with watering this guy, particularly if you're someone like me and has a whole jungle of plants to care for. Now, when this plant is not getting that water, you'll notice a couple things start happening. For one, obviously, um, as you can probably see here, all the way up the stem and all those weird little markings on there, those were all spots of leaves. So one of uh, the you know later signs of that underwatering that'll happen is those leaves themselves will just pop off and um, you don't have to you know brush into them, you don't have to do anything bad. You will literally just be sitting there looking at your plants, admiring how uh, weird it is, and one of the leaves will start flying off of it. Uh, some earlier signs that you might notice, of course, are uh, these crispy leaves that you can see here. They will just get brown and crunchy. Now that is uh, partially also a result of humidity, lack of humidity, I should say, um, but it can also be caused from that underwatering. And finally, something that you can see a little bit on here, but I more so had an issue with when I first got this plant, is that uh, the leaves will actually curl up and seize up. And that was kind of my first time when I got this plant that I was doing something wrong. I just couldn't figure out what it was at the time uh, because I had been watering it so frequently that I just assumed there was no way that it could be underwatered. But if you uh, do get one of these plants in from the nursery where you know it had been getting all the care that it needs and those leaves do start to seize up and crinkle up, then please, please, please do yourself a favor and do go in with more water. Now, not only do they require constant water, um, not only do they like a high humidity, additionally, they like bright, bright light. 
So um, I have had this guy living in one of my windowsills. Uh, it's the same place that I keep some succulents. So he gets quite a lot of light in that position. I've tried moving him to other places before that are a little more of an indirect light and um, you know he will tolerate it but really if I want him to grow the fastest and thrive I have to keep him in kind of one of those prime window spots. Now that gets into the growth for this guy and overall I do have to say even though this guy is pretty dramatic it does have a pretty fast growth cycle so you can see um, we do have two new leaves up at the top here that just came in and um, really the one saving grace of this plant that keeps it from completely dying off on me is basically just the fact that this new growth does come in so so fast. Now in addition to these beautiful leaves with these white um, you know lines on them that are very striking in the late um, late spring or late summer I believe it is they can actually produce these gorgeous yellow flowers that come out of the top. Um, now surprise surprise <laughs> despite the fantastic care that this guy has been getting he's not bloomed for me um, but I have seen them in person they are very pretty I believe they only last for about two weeks or so um, but when they do come in it's super beautiful and uh, you know just a really unique thing to see on such a little devil. As for how big these plants can get I believe that they max out around two feet so um, I'd say the sky is about a foot know, maybe a little bigger than a foot so he's about half the size that he can get. Um, I guess you know one day I will potentially have this guy just looking like a little palm tree with its long stalk and a couple leaves at the top. Um, of course if you are caring for this guy to the fullest of its ability then it will be big, it will be bushy, the leaves can get quite large, uh, much larger than the ones that I have on this plant right now. So it is again it's such a beautiful striking plant if you can get it right. It does also come in a variegated version. Um, I believe it's called a snow zebra, but I could be wrong on that one. Um, I can't even begin to think about the light and just nightmare that that plant has to be to care for. Um, but oh my god, are they gorgeous. I see them in plant perch groups all the time and I'm always like slightly tempted to get one, but uh, then I walk outside and I look at this guy and I remember that that is probably a horrible idea. Now sometimes these plants will put out side shoots and you can actually propagate it from those side shoots. You unfortunately won't just be able to propagate it from a leaf itself. Um, you really need tissue culture if you're really advanced, but um, as for if you're propagating it up, do wait for one of those shoots to pop out and you can root it up from there. So I hope you were able to learn at least something from this video. Hopefully if nothing else, you don't feel so bad about uh, the current condition of your plant or you learn something that will help you keep your healthy plant looking like uh, this one. Not that there's anything wrong with you. You're just, uh, you're special, that's all. If you had questions about this plant that did not get answered, of course, drop them in the comments down below and I will do my very best to get back to you. Um, don't forget to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. I promise uh, future plant care videos will not be as uh, sad as this guy, but I mean, hey, this is called Leave Me Alone Plant. It's not like I'm the greatest plant mom in the world plants. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.